Assalamu alaikum again. Um, happy Coronian summer. Uh, I hope you're enjoying your online learning. Uh, this is a beautiful experience, isn't it? Let's continue with the second part of recombinant DNA based molecular techniques. Um, in this lecture, we'll be covering uh, two or three nice techniques. Uh, one involves analysis of uh, regulatory sequences of transcription, and um, we'll talk about techniques that um, are based that that would allow us to analyze protein-protein interaction. Now, and they're all based on the production of recombinant DNA, which is a DNA molecule that is made of two or more uh, foreign independent DNA sequences using genetic engineering and restriction in the nucleases, we can in integrate different pieces of DNA, uh, creating recombinant DNA. Okay, so here what we'll be talking about is, the, the question is, um, how can we determine which sequence of DNA is important for transcription? Okay, so in this technique, we'll be talking about how we can determine, again, which sequence is important for transcription of a certain gene, okay? And we'll talk about the use of an enzyme um, that would allow us to do that. Okay, so what are transcriptional regulatory sequences? They're basically, um, they are, there are different types of sequences. We have the core promoter sequence that includes the teta box if you remember what that is so it's a sequence that is upstream of the transcription start site so this is the transcription start site right here so you have the promoter region that includes the teta box for example which is basically the region where the rna polymerase binds to in order to start transcription at the transcription start site but you do have other sequences that are important Examples include promoter proximal element and enhancers. Now, the promoter proximal element is basically a sequence that would bind to a, a regulatory protein in order to coordinate and harmonize expression of different genes having the same promoter proximal element. And usually these genes participate in a similar function or a similar pathway, okay? Now you can have enhancers as well, okay? And these enhancers are regions that are um, that can be located far away from where the gene is. They can be located upstream, or they can be located downstream, or they can be located within the gene itself, like in entrons, for example. Okay. And what happens is that the DNA loops so that you can have interaction between proteins that bind to the enhancer with proteins that bind to the uh, core promoter, okay? Or proteins that bind to the promoter proximal element. You can have enhancers and you can have silencers. So you can have regions that activate transcription and you can have regions that inhibit or block transcription. Same thing with the promoter proximal elements. You can have uh, elements that would uh, inhibit or activate transcription. So let's say that we have a gene and we want to know what regions are important for the transcription of this gene. That's what we want to study. So what we do is that we use recombinant DNA technology in here. Okay. And we take advantage of an enzyme known as firefly luciferase. So it's a luciferase enzyme. Uh, this is not a promotion, by the way, okay? but it's, it's funny. Anyhow, so this is the firefly. What is firefly? It's this insect that has a tail that fluoresces. It, it illuminates, right? So uh, it, it lights up. And scientists found out that the tail lights up because uh, the enzyme, there is an enzyme known as luciferase, and what luciferase does is that it converts a molecule known as luciferin into something else, oxyluciferin, whatever the name is, producing a light. Okay, so again, 
just like green fluorescent protein fluorescing and scientists taking advantage of it also scientists uh, has taken scientists have taken advantage of the luciferase enzyme so how do they do that what they do is that they take luciferase and they place it um, in a plasmid okay but this luciferase enzyme or the gene itself is not regulated it's not controlled by by its own promoter its own natural promoter rather what we place in here is the promoter of gene of interest okay so we do recombinant dna technology we do genetic engineering whereby i have the luciferase enzyme in here placed within the plasmid and transcription of the luciferase gene is controlled by the promoter that i want to study okay now the luciferase gene is known as a reporter gene why because it gives me information about how active transcription is so the idea is that if the promoter is very active you will have a lot of production of luciferase and i would be able to know by measuring how much light is produced if the promoter region if the promoter sequence is not really that active you will have little production of the luciferase protein and the amount of light measured would be low if the promoter region is not active whatsoever it means that there is no transcription meaning that there is no light so the amount of light produced by the luciferase enzyme by that reaction that i showed you would tell us something about the promoter region okay so here's what we do uh, we create this recombinant dna in plasmid and we insert it into cells and the cells are human cells so human cells can accept plasmids by the way um, so that's what we do we have this promoter region right here now the promoter region again you can have the core promoter which is really necessary for the binding of the RNA polymerase upstream of the promoter region let's say that you have an activating region you have a promoter proximal element an element that binds to a an activating protein an activator and you have induction of uh, transcription and let's say that in this promoter region you have a repressor region as well so that you can have repressors that bind here preventing transcription from uh, resuming okay so that's what we do we have this is the experiment and these are the results and that's what we do here we have the luciferase enzyme the gene itself except that there is no promoter whatsoever what does that mean it means that there should be no production of luciferase protein so why is it that we have a signal remember how we talked about uh, leakage like a faucet for example you have uh, uh, that drops water well you can have gene leakage as well you, have, you can have transcription leakage whereby even though there is no promoter even though uh, there's no binding of uh, really strong binding of the RNA polymerase to the promoter well some RNA polymerase can can uh, leak can bind uh, to the uh, to the region transcribing the luciferase protein so this is really background okay so that's what is known as a negative control so what's a negative control it is basically a sample that I know it should not work so that's a negative control and then we can have a positive control so what is a positive control it is a sample it is a a gene construct it's a recombinant dna that i know it should work so when i do an experiment any experiment i should have a negative control something that i know should not work and i should get zero results and I should have a positive control, something that should work, and I should have good results. So that's a positive control. Now, 
I take the region of interest right here, the promoter region, the whole promoter region of the gene that I that I want to analyze. And I put it upstream of the luciferase gene. Now, notice I have some signal in here. Okay, so what does that mean? The promoter is functioning, it's working fine. It's producing luciferase protein. There is transcription and as a result, there is translation as well. Great. Now what I do, I want to know the important regions or the regions that are important for transcription, the regions that regulate transcription. So what do I do? I start chopping off the promoter. I start deleting sequences of the promoter one by one, portion by portion. So I reduce this uh, part of the promoter region. So notice that the, the repressor region is located right here. If I remove it, okay, if I remove part of it, what happens is that there is a little increase, but not a whole much. So there's hardly any difference between these two. What if I remove the whole repressor region? Notice that there is large increase in production of luciferase. This increase tells me that there is a repressor region and the region is located in this part or that part because I know exactly what I'm chopping off, what I'm cutting from the promoter. Now, I keep on chopping off the promoter, again, sequence by sequence. And so what I do is that I, I remove this part right here, okay? And there is no difference, hardly any difference between these two. So there is little reduction, but not a whole much, okay? Now, what I do is that now I remove the activating region. Notice the reduction that happens in transcription, which is measured by how much luciferase there is, how much light is produced. Notice that there is a drop in the production of luciferase. That tells me that this region right here contains an activating region, okay? Now, I remove then the core promoter region. What happens? There's no production or hardly any production of the luciferase protein. What if I remove this whole thing? Well, same thing. So I compare these to this one right here, the negative control. They're almost the same thing. So what does that tell me? it tells me that the core promoter exists right here, okay? So this is the reporter gene assay. Assay means like experiment or uh, 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 something that I do to measure something else. Okay, so if I say enzyme assay, it's a, a method by which I can measure enzyme activity, okay? So again, by doing recombinant DNA technology, by creating recombinant DNA, a reporter gene assay, having a gene of luciferase controlled by a promoter of interest, a foreign promoter that I want to study, by cutting off the promoter region uh, part by part, portion by portion, I can tell whether a certain region is a repressor region, an activating region, or even the core promoter itself. Okay, so here we've combined two things to each other, recombinant DNA technology plus use of enzymes in, um, in molecular biology. Okay, so now let's see. Um, let's say that I want to know if a protein interacts with another protein. In fact, if you look into biochemistry as you will study, or when we talk about uh, molecular biology in the molecular biology lectures, protein-protein interaction is essential for cell function. So a protein does not behave by itself. It has to interact with other molecules. And proteins can interact with each other, regulating each other's function. What does LACZ do? Well, what LACZ does is that it, the LACZ gene, it produces an enzyme known as beta-galactosidase. And this beta-galactosidase converts a metabolite, a modified lactose or galactose uh, 
sorry, lactose metabolite, okay, um, known as X-gal, and when the enzyme cleaves X-gal, it produces another molecule that gives a blue color. So yeast grow on dishes like in, as colonies, just like bacteria. Now, each colony would produce let's uh, so again what is the trick here the trick is that why is it that these colonies look blue well because you have binding of the protein the uas protein into the promoter region and it has the activating domain that can induce or activate transcription so the trick here is to have these both domains next to each other or close to each other in order for transcription to happen okay so what we do in here is that we create hybrid proteins recombinant proteins let's say that i have a protein and i want to know what other proteins interact with this protein directly so i create a hybrid uh, protein so here this is X is the, uh, the the protein of interest or the gene of interest that I, I want to know what other proteins interact with protein X so I have gene X uh, linked with the gene that produces the GAL4 binding domain the DNA binding domain that is so I produce a protein that is that is a recombinant protein that is made of X, the protein of interest, okay, with the binding domain, the DNA binding domain of the um, of the GAL4 protein. Now, if I if I let yeast cells express this protein right here, you can have binding of the 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 protein to the DNA, but there would be no transcription going on. Why? because there is no activating domain that is needed for transcription to be induced. And I create another plasmid right here, and this plasmid produces gene Y. And I can have different plasmids with different genes in here. So I can have gene Y, gene Z, gene B, gene D, whatever, you know, different genes in here. I can insert them in here. So each plasmid would have one particular gene except that this gene that I insert in here when it is transcribed it is transcribed with the activating domain okay if I have if I insert this plasmid into yeast cells and yeast cells produce whatever Y gene with the activating domain there would be no transcription going on transcription of the lag Z gene. Why? Because there is no binding to the DNA. So in order for transcription to take place, you have to have two things going on. One of them is that you have to have an activating domain and the binding domain next to each other. They have to be close to each other. And how can they be close to each other? Well, that's the second condition. You have to have X and Y interact with each other. Now you can have these two domains next to each other having transcription. So the idea here is that if you have uh, the, uh, we, we insert both plasmids into yeast cells. So you can have production of X and Y. If there is no interaction between X and Y, it means that these two domains, the activating domain and the DNA binding domain would not be close to each other and there would be no transcription. And as a result, you will have yeast cells appearing as white colonies because there is no production of the lac Z, there's no metabolism of the X gal into the blue metabolite. But if there is interaction between X and Y, it means that these two now are very close to each other and as a result even though they are separated by x and y but they are close to each other 
and as a result you can have transcription of the reporter gene or the LAC Z gene. Now I would insert into yeast cells uh, all of the yeast cells I would insert into them the plasma that produces X and I would also insert into them different plasmids having different genes again Y, Z, W, A, B, whatever, different plasmids producing different proteins. And I'm hoping that I can find a protein or a gene, a gene that produces a protein that would interact with X. Now, once I have a blue colony, I know that there is interaction between X and whatever uh, protein, okay? And I can take this colony, grow it, isolate the plasmids, and I can tell what the Y gene is exactly.